All right, we are back at it. Welcome back to the Trading Triangle. I'm your host, Trader Nate. And of course, with me, we've got Sean Clark. How you doing, Sean? Yeah, good, thank you. Ready for the week ahead. Yeah, it's been a little while. Good to see you guys again. And Kay, we've got Kay as well. How you doing, Kay? Man, two weeks. It was too long. Of a break. <laughs> <laughs> I was bored too. My, you know, I was bored to hell, man. <laughs> I love it. Well, we're back. You know, live on both X. You can find us on Wolf Financial at X, or also at Trader Nate here. My handle on X, and then uh, we're also live streaming on YouTube at the Trading Triangle. Fantastic channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. So we are killing it over there, adding more content every week, and including these live streams that we do every Sunday. So thanks for tuning in. And a quick disclaimer, of course, we are not financial professionals or advisors, and none of this should be taken as financial advice or tax information or anything like that. This is purely entertainment and educational purposes, or for those purposes. We enjoy it. We hope you guys do too. Just like to share our trade ideas every week. And with that, I think we should get into them. Do keep in mind, we are taking audience requests, so send those tickers in. If you're uh, tuned in on X or on YouTube, just drop comments below and we'll get to them and certainly uh, run through additional tickers. We've got some, though, like we do every week, lined up, and we'll start with those. We say, guys, get right into it. Yeah, do you want to make a quick announcement on our changes coming up for next week? I do, I do. So you guys, next week, we'll keep the same Sunday. We're going to start an hour earlier. And uh, make sure you mark that on your schedules. But we'll also, of course, put the, the live stream out there so you can just click the reminder. But we're going to start an hour earlier. So 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, Kay. That's right. And uh, yeah, same content, same same amount of good stuff. Just starting it one hour ahead of time. All right. So getting into the overview for the week, we've got some red and some green across the board. Uh, Meta with a nice clean plus 7% caught my attention while NVIDIA kind of faded. But, you know, Marcus didn't do great. Uh, any Anything jump off the page for you, Kay? Uh, no, mostly I was uh, looking at Tesla for the pretty much the entire week. It was up and down oh, for yeah. Tesla. Um, I didn't actually track much on the big seven, uh, the traditional big seven this week. But mostly I was focused on Tesla. Adding. Well, Tesla's, yeah, the delivery numbers and struggling, right? Yeah. Yep. Definitely had a downside trade there that uh, called out actually on my uh, for my newsletter subscribers, and hopefully people took advantage of that. Did you trade that at all? I did, yeah. Nice. All right. How about you, Sean? Did you get on the Tesla trade? No, I didn't. I did see it kind of kind of wobbling around for the whole week, so that was interesting to see. Uh, nice to see Meta up 7%, which is interesting uh, yeah. compared to the rest of what's going on. Really stands um, out. Uh, did, did, did Tesla get some news at the end of the week? I think they're up three or four percent after hours. The robo taxi um, news. Robo taxi, in, yeah. Yeah. In August, August, I think. Yeah. So typical Tesla, right? You're not going to get just a straight move one direction or another. You get some volatility along the way. Are you guys uh, looking at these levels here as buying opportunities? Just quick. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Nate, I have been, um, you know, dollar cost averaging to my long term position. And uh, it's basically nibbling away here and there, not like, you know, dumping a lot of cash in one go. Um, but at these levels, you know, it's like, I don't know if it's going to go down to 140. It's, I don't know if it's going to go down to $100, right? So I'm just preparing. I have cash. I have the certain amount allocated. And I'm basically, you know, adding here and there slowly as, you know, it gets a pullback of 3 4 5%. And over a course of a couple months, you know, you'll have a position built out. Yeah, I like it, man. Yeah. Doing the same, Sean? Pretty much, yeah. Just DCA for a long, long time. Yeah, you know, that's that's the approach, right? If it drops from here, you continue to DCA. But the, you know how Tesla is. It's hard to get in. So I like that approach for sure. That was a, yeah, 7% pullback. So yeah, take advantage um, if you are, you know, bullish for the long term. Be sure to get those ticker requests in, you guys. If any of these names that we missed you want to hear us talk about later, we will get at them. We'll get, keep this rolling to the Fear and Greed Index. The VIX got up to 16. What? All right. I thought it had, had kind of faded back down to the 13 handle, but I didn't realize it spiked it again. Everything, all these, uh, you know, SPY, KQQ, Diamonds, IWM, everything down across the week. I noticed, though, Bitcoin back above 70K today. Did you see that, Kay? No, I did not, actually. I uh, was uh, busy with something else. But yeah, so the numbers, we'll have to update those as well on the deck. Well, you know how Bitcoin is. We don't update it the second before we jump on. It could be totally, <laughs> it's yeah, totally yeah. different. Um, but yeah, jumped. it's up above 70K now. Um, at least last I checked, it might be back below. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a pullback this week. We'll get into those charts. 
Um, Sean, did you have any thoughts around CPI, PPI this week? Are you going to kind of take it easy ahead of those events? or? Uh, yeah, most definitely. I think this is probably one of the bigger ones. We had January, February results to kind of peaked up a little bit. So it'd be nice to see if this one kind of comes back down and kind of goes with the overall trend. Um, but again, if it does kind of stay hot, then that is a little bit concerning. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what the markets do after that. Uh, yeah, that's kind of all I'm really looking for this week, but just be trading carefully around that kind of area, if at all. Uh, so I probably won't trade at all. This week, I'm still taking a little bit of a break with trading. I, I, you know, I still look at the markets. I take off choose when I see a really good one. But yeah, I'm just taking a step back at the moment, really. Nice. All right. That's not bad at all. We are in the greed zone still squarely, but um, not extreme greed. So things to, there's still opportunity. We'll have to see. These charts are going to be interesting when we get into them. Shout out Trader AZ. Thanks for joining us as always. And let's keep it rolling. We've got a little bit of earnings this week to pay attention to. Banks at the end of the week really is what I'm paying most attention to. Uh, Kay, what's jumping off this week for earnings for you? Anything? Uh, pretty much at the, the banks. And I will say Delta on Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. It's like Actually, a kickoff. They generally are the ones that kick off the earning season. Yeah. And you, get, you know, Delta is... The, Delta earnings has my attention, but I'm actually watching the, the chart for American Airlines, AAL. Um, it's it's very interesting. I'm going to write about it in my newsletter actually today. So I'll get that out. But yeah, basically, I'm using the Delta earnings to trade American Airlines, if that makes sense. And uh, Sean, any of these names jump off for you? No, it's just uh, it's nice to see earnings season kind of rolling back through, isn't it? So this is, this is the start of the chaos, I guess. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. This, this is going to be a very, very crucial earning season. <laughs> yeah. Why do you say that? Well, you know, because the previous earning season was mostly for the last quarter, right? Sorry, for, for 2023 last quarter. This earning season is going to be the first quarter, which is generally weaker for most companies, especially in the retail sector, especially in, you know, all the shoppings are done. So we'll really have to see. And then there was also weakness in the enterprise spending. So we'll have to really see those stock names like GitLabs and Snows of the world and Palantirs of the world. How is the first quarter treating from an enterprise spending standpoint? It's going to be a lot of info to trade around as, as always. You know, I kind of like that. All right, well, let's see how it plays out. We got to, just like you said, guys, we're just kicking into it. So it's going to be a great, uh, great trading session yet again in the coming month. I will say um, this big red candle, jumping into SPY here, um, it is a little concerning. Um, I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I'm not saying that any, anything's, um, you know, for certain just yet. I'm not saying we're rolling over, but this is the first signal I've got this. This big red candle here is a bearish engulfing candle on Thursday, right? Completely wiped out. Um, basically jumped up, tried to hit, hit new highs, and then just sold out back to this support level around 5.13. Um, got a nice little bounce Friday, but we are now below the five-day moving average and have have closed below it you know, more than three times. Tried to push up to it, but still below. So I could see things rolling over here. This is like the first time I've really felt like all right, we might actually roll over, but I don't think we're going to see too big of a drop. We got the 50 day moving average coming in and really at 500, which is a psych level, we've got a gap to fill and this Fibonacci level. So um, all of that to say, if we pull back, I would be looking at anywhere around 500 is a great place to add and potentially go long. Um, that's my that's where my head's kind of at. Otherwise, just kind of holding steady here. Um, and, and accumulating cash. Um, Sean, I'll throw it to you first. And anything on this chart jump off the page? So this chart, I'm just basically staying away from until Wednesday when we get CPI because that's got to be the, the massive catalyst, isn't it? I know no, I say it every time it comes around every month, but yeah. it, it's got to move this market dramatically either way, depending on what kind of results we get. Um, so nothing really to add. Obviously, it does look bearish, but again, if we do get a, a kind of a lower than expected CPI report, then we have you know, five twenty four is going to be broken, in my opinion, uh, to the upside. I mean, um, but obviously, if we get a bit of a hot print, I think five hundred would be broken. I think we go that low. Um, to be quite honest with you, I think we go below five hundred. But yeah, um, just waiting, sitting on my hands until Wednesday, basically. There you go. No spy for Sean until yeah. after CPI. <laughs> I like that. Um, how about you, Kay? So I have a little bit of a different opinion here, right? Um, right. So on, on, we see that bearish engulfing candle, right? And Friday was actually not bad. And there are a couple of things also happening, right? So first, if you notice that on Good Friday, when the markets were closed, 
Jerome Powell was somewhere and he was talking about um, how the mark, how the env- environment is still strong and you know we might not need to cut a lot of interest rate he wants to get the confirmation so and then we saw a couple other uh, fed members come out throughout the week in different fashion they mentioned that hey we might only get two interest rate cuts maybe even one so i think what is happening is they are kind of preparing the market you know of maybe not having interest rate cuts or maybe only having one or two throughout the year I really think if if Friday we had that another down uh, sell day, then I would have been a little bit more concerned. But I mean, I of course I agree with Sean that we will have to watch the CPI and PPI. But you know, if you really go back and look at the data for CPI, you only had once or maybe twice that when the um, uh, the numbers came under. Most of the times it was has been above what was expected, and one time it was came as is. So I'm really not concerned right now. We may not break four five twenty for me. We may oscillate, but at five ten, you have a major volume shelf. Yeah, that's a that's interesting. The five ten volume shelf is noted for sure, and um, we've continued to power higher. So we'll see if it continues to just buy the dip here really quickly and eat it right up, or if we get a little bit more of a pullback. But I would say this is the first time I felt like there there's any kind of actual real signal. Every every other time we've been out here, it's just like. It's going to keep going higher, right? So something to watch, but I'm still bullish. There's no doubt about it. Um, the Qs are, are zeroed in on the four-hour uh, candles, and this is just to highlight that we're continuing to chop sideways, right? Retrace the entire 446 down to 434 um, range on, um, I think that was on Thursday. It's always hard for me to tell on the four hours. It was Thursday or Friday, but trace the whole thing, right? And so... The, the range is holding, and I'm kind of looking for 434 to hold on the, the you know lower end and maintain support there. And if we break that, maybe we see some continued downside where 446 for the Qs uh, would be the upside breakout level. I'd be looking for an upside trade um, if we can break out and retest that level. Sean, that's kind of the setup I would imagine you're looking for is a breakout of that range. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah, exactly right. I think uh, break upwards or downwards, actually, to be honest with you, like you said, with the 435-ish. 446 but again obviously to get that move i think we get that this week uh, depending on what the, the results are i know i've said it before i said it with spy but um it, it, it will break either way i think it's not going to stay flat is it on, on, on wednesday uh, right. wednesday morning so uh but yeah i mean it looks like it wants to try and claw back up again obviously we had a big kind of red day on thursday and it's just kind of retraced i like the way it's retraced back above the kind of 50 percent level uh, there thereabouts um so it shows that the buyers are still there and you know it makes sense in this market at the moment yeah i'm with you how about uk what would you add i i mean similar sentiments over here similar to the spy one and looking at the options data you know mostly on fridays when the options generally close for the week for both spy and qq you generally have a little bit more put to call ratio but it's it's not that bad it's, it's really pretty standard for week after week for these two indices Yes, sir. All right. We'll keep it going. Get in some tickers. Uh, shout out Sabrina. See you out there. Thanks for joining us again. Also see the request for Tilray and Service Now. I got those noted, you guys. Interesting. Um, both fronts with Tilray reporting. But Sean, I'll hand it over to you. And we've got Oracle up first, right? We do. And I think I actually had a question directed to me. Uh, which was, Sean, what about your T-Rail, T-Rail petition? Did you come out? I did. I, uh, I sold out before the weekend a couple of weeks ago. It was about, I think it was like $2 to 230 So I made a nice a nice bit on that. So just to kind of clarify if, you, if nice. you're wondering that one. Um, Oracle up first. So these are two stocks that I've never covered, and they're probably more so in Kay's ballpark. But I just like the setups. So we'll, we'll talk to this one, I guess, first for, for Oracle. Um, so we can see it's kind of hovering around the 20 moving average. But we do have a resistance point of uh, 127.40. And you can see it's kind of a fairly good resistance. Um, and we've pushed up basically on the earnings just recently. We tried to get above that, come back down, but we rejected quite hard. Uh, but it looks like we're trying to make another move towards that again. So basically, a breakout trade of 127.40 is what I'm looking for. But on the downside of that, so if we do get a bit of a weak week, that makes sense. A less strong <laughs> week. I don't know how to explain that. Weak with an A. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So if we break one, two, three, fifty, and um, then I see basically one seventeen eighty, which is a nice move, uh, especially if you're day trading that, um, you know, 
obviously it depends what leverage you kind of have on it in terms of risk levels, whatever your risk appetite is. But really simple chart. Um, I've kept both of them quite simple this week. Breakout trade to the upside or just a continuation downward move breaking the support. What are your guys' thoughts on this one? Yeah, I like the setup with the uh, consolidation following this big gap up. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be looking for the, the breakout that you highlighted there. Um, and I noted, I just kind of zoomed out on Oracle a bit, and the, it really moves on earnings, right? So um, <clears throat> it looks like it gapped down the last couple of earnings in the, or uh, before this year, and 23 had a couple of gap downs. And then uh, most recent earnings, nice big gap up here before consolidation. So um, yeah, I'd be looking for that break above, um, just as you mentioned, getting above 127 first. But a uh, nice retest there would be a good spot to go along. I'm right there with you. Nice. And honestly, I was tracking Oracle when it was like trading in the 106 to 110 range. I just didn't even track. Like, I don't even know when did it move up to $132. <laughs> 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 you missed it, Gay. You missed it. Oh, my God. But yeah, I think uh, um, for me, I think uh, I definitely wait for the, the pullback to happen for the gap fill. Um, if not, then I'm not going to touch the stock. I let it run. Yeah, if it does break that support, it could could fade, right? Yeah, because the volume shelf actually comes around your uh, 113, 91. That's where you see the majority of the volume shelf. Um, so, you know, we could see, the, because the dividend, uh, ex-dividend date or dividend push, dividend date is coming up soon. I think it generally happens a couple of weeks after earnings, so it should be coming up soon. So maybe we may yeah, see the number the pull, pull back. Pull back. Uh, but if it keeps going higher, as Sean is looking for a breakout trade, you know, uh, I probably wouldn't touch Oracle at those levels. Uh, I, I like Oracle a little bit at a lower level, like 112, 13 range. Uh, we'll see if you get it. We'll see. Yeah, no, no. If not, then move on to the next talk. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. Maybe> on. <laughs> All right. Well, we should move on. There you go. <laughs> Awesome. So this is a similar sort of setup. So a push on earnings. This is Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare, sorry, ticker symbol NET. You've probably heard of it. Case covered it a couple of times, I think, over the past. I think maybe you know, possibly. I like this um, one. I might have covered it, yeah. 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 I see a little bit of confluence, um, not now, but potentially in the future. So if we can use this shelf, which is the 50 moving average, which is the pink line kind of running through, through the screen here, you can see the support it's had in the past kind of earlier in the year, so January, February, you can see that where it's kind of pushed off of that, used it as a bit of a, a you know, support line. We're kind of seeing that again now. You can see the buyers coming in around this kind of 50 moving average. But what I want to see is a nice push of basically above $100. Um, I mean, you could get in now if you're feeling really, really risky um, in terms of you know, getting in the move early, or you can actually start a position and add to it later on if it does complete that move above $100. Um, but for me personally, I'd be waiting for it to get above $100 so it can come up retest the $100 mark, maybe even 98 because, you know, that's where the trend line is. No investor support there. Um, and obviously you've got the, the volume profile there on the right side as well. So there's plenty of confluence there. And you can see where Cloudflare's kind of pulled back over the earnings. And perhaps people thinking, oh, actually, it's kind of retraced enough now. Should I get back in and start another move? I add to my long-term position, that kind of, that kind of thinking. Um, but this one also is a bit of a ball flag setup. You can see where I've drawn kind of like a golf flag uh, standard thing. I'm not going to continue talking. I've talked way too much. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll hand over to one of you. We're back. We're definitely back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Bit rusty. laughs> I'll jump right in and say, so yeah, ticker NET here. It's a, it's definitely an interesting one to trade. And I have a shout out to Trend Spider for the anchored VWAP and uh, Brian Shannon for the knowledge behind it. But I, I've used the anchor VWAP from uh, the earnings gap that we jumped up to. And it's basically forming that upper uh, trend line that it's been rejecting off of. And that's right at $100 right now. So I'm with you. I think a break above um, that AV up level and a retest, which is right at 100, it's also a psych level. And you've got all those other points of confluence. I would be looking for a nice, uh, another leg higher if we could get that move. Um, and a rejection at 100, you know, I would be just patient. If you're looking to go long, Wait for it to see if it retraces back to the bottom of that channel. But uh, that's my thoughts there. Kay, what about you? So I think I agree with your points. And I 100 is definitely the level that we should track for. Uh, the good news is that the it did the price did you know 
uh, end up after the 50 day moving average so it did cross that a couple things so upcoming earning is going to be on 52 so about in a month or so we do have 14 up revisions on this stock especially with cloudflare and only three down revisions so that that's definitely going to set up the the earning expectation for the stock and if it's able to you know beat it and they have ha- they have had a very very good run in the earnings history they have missed their uh, revenue uh, once and they have missed their eps once that's it since they have started reporting earnings so a very solid record of reporting yeah. earnings so if we are we are expecting we could see uh, bounce back up to the 100 plus level where it was uh, after the earnings last time we could see another gap up but it could be you could build this position out over the next 3 weeks in anticipation of the earnings good stuff Sounds like you want to play earnings. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I do play earnings on Net and GitLabs and others. We're almost back in the thick of it. It's going to be great yeah. when we get there. All right. So, where else can we find you this week? Yeah, you can find me on X. I post uh, fairly daily at the moment, but you know, charts, uh, insights, etc., around the markets, my kind of thoughts. Um, YouTube, you can get me on there as well. Kind of trade ideas, weekly trade ideas, which is always fun to, to give them out to you know the people of the world and of course the Substack, which i don't really write on at the moment but you can still subscribe to it so i'll hand you over to nate now <laughs> yeah good stuff definitely give sean a, a follow and uh check out his youtube channel it is top notch i am a big fan myself and uh yeah let's get into some more charts here i've got a couple lined up for us and uh, i do see the requests coming in we got sofi added to the list we'll be sure to get to that a little bit later here in the show um and then yeah retail trader question about minimizing the broadcast in the background i'm guessing that you're watching on x and it's probably not allowing for it um you could try the youtube channel the trading triangle if you're having the you know wanted to see if you can minimize and and still work in the back work with this going on in the background maybe that helps or vice versa but i appreciate you guys tuning in whether it's on x or youtube and i'll get right back to it so here we go coupon coupon cpng is the ticker and uh, actually kind of similar looking chart to what we were just looking at, right? With uh, what you had, Sean, um, with Cloudflare. And uh, we've got a little bit of a downtrend. And that yellow line there is the um, anchored VWAP from the gap up from its earnings. So um, what I'm looking at here is we've rejected, you know, once already, um, a little bit, a couple of weeks ago here, a nice big upper wick against that same line. And then we, again, to close out last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, kind of faded. And that also happens to be at a FIB level 1844. I want to make sure I got that right. And uh, so all of that there, plus this trend line, I think we might see a fade here in Coupang, and it would be a short trade potentially. Um, the premiums on these options tend to run nice and juicy. So if you already own 100 shares, I think this 1850 level would be a decent spot to sell covered calls at and collect some premium. Um, and then conversely, you might be looking for some support at about 17, maybe 17 and a quarter, um, which is the next near the next FIB level. It could continue to drop right and trend lower. So I'm not as excited about that support unless we see a couple candles bounce there. More or less looking for a downside trade if markets do roll over and uh, this continues to reject as it has been against its anchor VWAP. Um, what do you think, Sean? Does this look like it's rolling over to you or would you be looking for a potential breakout trade here? Um, so I'm going to take this one a little bit differently towards my normal thesis. And oh. yes, I agree with you with the downside, actually. I do I do agree with you on the downside. But one of the things I've had in the past, I think you've actually brought this up before, um, is the 17 level I've got firmly drawn on my chart. Um, so I'd be looking for a retracement down to kind of that 17 level. You can kind yeah. of see where that kind of volume is. It did try and get there recently, didn't it, about 17.38. Um, but right. yeah, basically a move lower would be good, and I'd be looking to get in at 17. Um, I know it's not quite at the bottom of the channel, um, but you know that's to me that's a, a very strong level of, of support. And then play it upwards. If that makes sense. Keep a nice tight stop plus and play it upwards, probably towards the, you know again to the top of this channel, which by then it might be in about eighteen ish, uh, seventeen fifty, uh, which on the day trading standard is pretty good um, in, in my experience. But yeah, no, I agree. I think um, a move lower is looking very very possible for Coupon. Yeah, looking likely. And I like that. If I zoomed out, I get that 17 level uh, firmly like you're talking about. And I'm using this recent, uh, you know, low to high in those FIB levels. And um, so it's close to the 17 to your point. But yeah, that's right. If we zoom out, that's a strong level. I like it. Good call. 
Um, Kay, what are your thoughts? Anything to add to, Coop, to CPNG? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, this doesn't seem like a lot of open interest on Coupon, but uh, funny, uh, two weeks from now, we actually have uh, 3,000 open interest at $18 level. Uh, sorry, 3,000. Yeah, 3,000. And then for next week, it's only 308. So it's a pretty big uh, difference uh, in the open interest. That is the gap there. And uh, yeah, I mean, as I go out couple, let's say four weeks out. Yeah, the data is probably not updated on my side. Maybe that's the reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the chart, I think, speaks volumes here. I do think that we're going to roll over, but we'll see if we get that 17 support level. I'll be keeping an eye on that. I'm going to keep it going here because I want to make sure we have time for these tickers. I see more coming in, guys. I see right. BA. We've got DG. I'll definitely take a look at those. And, uh, yeah. Oh, we got – oh, no, no, never mind. There's a shout-out to Wolf. I thought it was a Wolf ticker. That always confuses me. All right, back to the charts. <laughs> <laughs> STZ is Constellation Brands, and uh, they report this week. And check out this setup, you guys. I mean, I really, I really like this. It's not one I usually trade, um, but it got my attention because of earnings, I think. So we had a rejection recently at 273, which was its prior high back in July last year. Um, and then there's also this consolidation that it went through after that rejection back in July um, between 258, 263, call us 262.91. Um, but yeah, 258 to 263. And just recently powered right through that and is now retesting that level. Got a nice little bounce off of the, the upper end of that range on Friday. I think it could trace back into that zone potentially, but I'd be looking for things to hold up there at the, the uh, excuse me, 258. And if it did, uh, you have the 50 day moving average coming up as support right in that area. And I would like that to be a uh, nice area for buying. See a nice uptrend we've got here that continues. And you have that volume shelf kind of sticking out right there at 260. So all of that is what I'm looking for here to for a potential upside trade. If we do get a bit of a fade here ahead of earnings or so I think it's on Thursday um, or if earnings give us a pullback, but it holds that 258 level. I think it's a great spot um, here for Constellation Brands. Um, have you looked at this one before, Sean, STZ? No, I've never heard of it um, at all, actually, uh, surprisingly. But no, is it? could this be like an extended, like a, a bigger kind of cup and handle? I don't know if you... So it does right. look a bit like that, right? So you're saying from th from that high all the way over, we're hitting it. If we pull yeah. back, like I'm saying, and then come back up to it, that would give us that cup and handle. Exactly right. Nice. I don't know if it really counts with that big spike in the middle there, but that's kind of the shape I'm seeing throughout the chart, um, in which case I'd be looking for that 273 level to break. Might have to wait a little bit longer, be a bit patient with your trading, your emotions, but yeah, I think 273 for me would be the level. Um, I've written it down, so that's, that's what I'm looking at anyway. Yeah, very nice. What about you, Kay? Have you uh, messed around with STZ? So I I don't I have not traded STZ, but I have I am a long term holder of another company called Diageo, which is also in the liquor side. Yeah. And uh, generally, what we are seeing is that the because of the higher interest rates and you know the the sales of these companies have really gone down. And uh, this particular company did miss the uh, revenue uh, last. And then, of course, their gap actual of APS was also a miss. Uh, they do have 10 down revisions for the upcoming quarter. So they are expecting that the sale for this quarter, the, which just passed, is going to be weaker going into the earning season. So we'll see how that plays out. So that that may also play out, and we might see a, a, a push down on the stock price. Noted. All right. We'll see what happens here. Got earnings this week. STZ is a new name that we haven't really talked about. So I'm looking forward to it. You can find my comments on this because I am always full of comments at Trader Nate here on X. Also where the live streams are. Um, you, know, you can always find us on Sundays in addition to at Wolf Financial. I also write uh, for Wolf Financial on their sub or excuse me, on their uh, Beehive uh newsletter every Sunday. And then I have my own, a trader's education newsletter. I'll be posting more th later today, my trade ideas for the week. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in here to the trading triangle, because this is actually the most fun I have all week on Sundays. And with that, handing it over to Kay next. What do we got, Kay? Awesome. Thank you, Nate. So, you know, keeping in the same momentum of uh, looking at SaaS softwares. So for the audience, I did a video on my YouTube channel where we I talked about 22 
SaaS companies that you should definitely take into into account, especially with the AI revolution. So this one is GitLab. Uh, we did play the earnings last time, uh, the last earnings, and unfortunately, we had a gap down. Both Sean and I, we did take a little bit losses on the earnings play, which is a binary event, you know, as we say. But uh, next earning is coming up on six six, and you will start to notice that the at the for the GitLab. We have had a nice bounce of 200 day SMA. So that is a key yeah. critical level for this company. And you will notice another thing that a lot of volume shelf actually sits above in the 58 to 63, maybe even going to $64 is where the most of the volume shelf is. So RSI is also down, almost near oversold territory. So I'm not saying that we might see some kind of a breakout next week or so, but going to the earnings, we may see this buildup happening. And with GitLab, and of course, with any SaaS software, you know, you could earnings could play either way. But with a strong earnings coming out, we could see a further, you know, breakout trade, especially if you start we start building out. So, you know, full disclosure, I do have a position, and my position is around the 200 day SMA. So I am playing for the earnings moving for the next four weeks or so, building out for that trade. So it will be a swing trade. Nice. Yeah, I like this 200 day uh, bounce, by the way. I mean, that's a that's a double test right there and double bottom yep. off of the 200 day. That's pretty strong. Um, it would be nice to see it get now back above. Yeah, basically back above 60. Right. And uh, we'd really feel good about a continuation higher from there. So, yeah, I would be looking. This is a great area if you're looking to go long, in my opinion. Um, and then if it gets above 60, if you want it, if it you know, continued higher strongly at 60. Uh, continuing to add there that's kind of how i would trade that yeah i see a bit of a wedge actually um kind of starting from the earnings from the top of the the wick there which obviously punched down during the day um so if you drew it from there to kind of where we are now i guess for that kind of top trend line and obviously on the bottom the last two lows should we say kind of drawing a line there if we can break out that kind of you know triangle of wedge that'd be great to see um, just depends which way we go. And that's kind of around that kind of 58, 50 level, if we can get above that and stay above that. I know, you, Nate, you said 60. Um, but if we can get above that and stay above that and challenge the 50 moving average, that would be ideal. Um, because like you said, K okay, as well, there's lots of volume in that kind of area as well. So there's lots in the way. Um, what I don't want to see is the 200 move, moving average being broken. Um, I mean, you could play that quite nicely, I think, if you're into shorting um, GitLab. But if you see it broken and that 50 moving average comes down, pretty rapidly in my opinion so yeah we don't want to see that good call good call yeah. Keep, keeping it rolling okay keeping it rolling yeah exactly okay another um ticker which is also in the SaaS space and i brought this ticker i think before the previous earnings you know a couple of weeks before the previous earnings and we talked about after the earnings, we had this massive gap up so if you look at on your left hand side on the rsi when it went you know like to the moon after over 70, we had this massive gap up and look at the time from the previous earning to the last earnings, right? Two earnings. It basically barcoded that entire, you know, whole quarter. And now we started to see this path stock, particularly starting to fill that gap. And I don't know if you remember, Nate, I did mention that I don't, once it's beyond my price target, I just let the stock run and let the stock pull back for the gap fill. Now it's starting to bring my attention back to path because now it's starting to come to the level where I'll be right. interested. So again, entry would be preferably around the 20, 200 day SMA. Right now we are, the RSI is down to, I think below 30 almost. So um, this is something, again, we can play as a potential long-term swing trade. Um, again, you can use either stocks or you can use options play. I generally tend to use both, but this is something that I plan to add to my long-term position. It's an AI play also in the SaaS space. And this is actually one of the pure AI plays because they were always in robotics, uh, process automation robotics for the white collar jobs. And with AI, that's just going to make the software run even better. So something to definitely take a look at it if you are not familiar with this company. Uh, the name is UiPath, ticker symbol P-A-T-H. Nice. Yeah. I feel like we've definitely talked about this one. And, and I remember um, we were talking about with the fill in the gap, just let, just in general, right? Let the gap fill and then take advantage of the bounce. I always look for a bounce off of a gap fill. That's really what, 
regardless of what direction you're going, you look for the reversal. And uh, yeah, so this looks like it could be a good opportunity here. Um, the the fact that we're below the moving averages is not great, but you got that's the 200 day again, right? That's your entry, like you pointed yep. out. So yep. that's just great spot, right? You get the 200 day plus the gap fill. I mean, I'm with you in the fib level. So um, I'd be patient though. Like it's gonna be really tempting to get into a trade like this a little early. So that's that's the key thing I think is patience on this one. Yep, I love it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That twenty dollar level is fantastic. You've got, I mean, you both kind of mentioned it throughout it, but there's four points of confluence. The camera's there, not there. And four points of confluence. You've got an RSI, two hundred moving average, the the fib level there, and the gap fill as well. What more can you want? I mean, that's just you know, it screams setup to me. So I've written it in bold letters: half <laughs> twenty dollars. Cheers, Kay. Next up. <laughs> nice. More great charts. I love it. If you guys have more ticker requests, I've been not I've been you know jotting them down as we go, but do send those in. And Kay, where can we find you this week? You can find me on both Twitter or X, uh, as they call it, and on YouTube. So on YouTube, uh, if you the stocks that we talked about, we talked about Oracle, we talked about Path, we talked about um, forget the other one, Cloudflare, Cloudflare, Net, yes, and GitLab. Yeah. All of them are part of a series that I did for 22 stocks. So definitely go check that video out and you'll get to see how you can invest in the SaaS space because that is going to be the next stage of AI revolution, the second phase, apart from the semiconductor, if you missed the NVIDIA run. So you can check out my YouTube channel on that as well. Good stuff. Appreciate you guys tuning in and you know definitely check out what Sean and Kay put out every week. They put out just amazing content across all of these platforms. I am going to switch it up now to our fun with charts taking all these tickers let's we see just, here uh, we just got a compliment from our backgrounds hey so, awesome we put a lot of thought and time in our backgrounds you know i had to go find the right alley to get this uh, <laughs> <laughs> and hang my side. <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that oh yeah what's the double v we got uh, oh i think that was actually talking about um gitlab when we were looking at gitlab that's my guess um, but yeah, drop those ticker requests, and uh, you can see here I was taking a look at um, you know Cloudflare, and there's that you know that's that anchored view up I was talking about, right? Simple as just targeting that uh, earnings. But all right, let's get into some of these. I think at the very top we had Coinbase. Should we start there? Yes, your your favorite stock. <laughs> I've eased up on it because every time this here, here I'll, I'll show you guys. Usually, right like around this area here. I start talking mad trash, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then it does this, right? I think back here around 72, I was talking a bunch of crap about Coinbase, and then it did this number. So anyways, it does continue to perform, so I'm just not a fan. You are right. Um, but we got some, yeah, this is actually a pretty nice uh, looking chart, making higher highs and higher holding higher lows. Mm. Right? I guess you guys are probably seeing the same. Um, let me see, we got the 20 day moving average here, which is it's looking to get back above. It did drop below, um, but the 50 is still well below. What am I not looking? What am I not seeing just yet, Sean? Anything jumping off this chart? Uh, just potentially a bit of a rejection off the 20 minute average. I know you said it's there, but we mm -hmm. need to very quickly reclaim it if it wants to continue going higher. Uh, but that looks like a bit of a, a bit of a, a bounce. No, not perhaps a rejection, should I say, off of the yeah. trend line slash 20 million average you've just drawn. So, yeah. Yeah, I got to break this trend line, right? Okay, would you agree? Anything else to add for Coinbase? No, but, but let me ask you this. We know that the Bitcoin halving is happening in April, right? So we are, we are seeing that the Bitcoin price is very detached from Mara and other um, uh, similar. Like coin and, yeah. yeah, Riot and everybody else, Hut. I don't know. Does Coinbase also move just like Bitcoin? I have never tracked that, so I don't know if that's also the case. I, 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 there, you go. there you go. Ahead. I think it does, right? I was—is was, that what you're going to say? I think it kind of does yeah. move um, pretty, pretty a lot better than like Marathon Digital recently. Um, those miners, I think, have been struggling a bit, but uh, yeah, Coin. I think uh, if you see. You see this continuation above 70K this weekend with Bitcoin. I'm expecting coins going to run. And I would look for it to get above 270.55 um, to feel really good about another leg higher. Otherwise, we might just continue to kind of chop and maybe gradually move up. 
That's how I'm just, looking at it. It's crazy we're talking about 270 when a year ago it was literally $70. <laughs> <laughs> you missed something. <laughs> Do you guys want to go higher? All right, ready? I really hate Coinbase. I think it's <laughs> terrible. All right. Go enjoy next week, everybody. Kidding, Coinbase. All right. <laughs> Kidding, so, just like, of course. Uh, let's see. I, I saw oil stocks mentioned. So you you know. wanna you wanna pull up Exxon Mobil and look at that chart? Oh my god! This is this is what you want. Right? Oh my goodness! This is like going to. The- <clears throat> so Sean, sure. mentioned- yeah, we, I'm pretty sure we called out the 104 level, didn't we? Not so long ago. Absolutely did. Yep, we were we, we were ready for this breakout. We got yeah. it, and it has given no pullbacks. Right? Like if you got in. Great job on this red candle that retested that 104. Um, But if you missed it, um, yeah, that's been quite the run. And I would say now, Sean, what do you think? Cup and handle, maybe get a little bit of a pullback and then get back above 120? Or do we just keep running? Exactly right, yeah. I think, think, yeah, a little bit of a pullback. It's natural. It's normal. It's actually probably healthier for the stock. Um, But, you know, with this market, you just never know. But, yeah, I'd be looking to kind of get in around that 113, maybe 114 if it does pull down that aggressively. Uh, But we do have a catalyst, obviously, on Wednesday as well, which might help that. So we'll see. Uh, But it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon, does it? It really doesn't. Like, let's pretend it does stop there. Like, you know, that was that's our high. Effectively, yeah, I mean, we could pull back. All the way back to about this 112. It gets a little messy with all those levels in there. So I remove this fib. But just trying to see like what would make sense from a fib Fibonacci level. And if we pull back to this 112, 113 kind of area, that would be nice and healthy. Get a nice, get some support there and continue higher. That's your buying opportunity, I would think, for something like ExxonMobil. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I would definitely watch for. I mean, I mean, this is a stock that I generally don't tend to get in once it starts pulling back the whole energy sector. So I'm going to wait for the pullback on this one. Did you guys see Occidental? No. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, just real quick. Oh, my goodness, another one. Oh, that's why. Yeah, so look, look at this candle on Friday. I mean, it just absolutely blast off, right? This huge candle. <clears throat> it's it's finally broke above the 67 level. I mean, if you zoom out, you can see it's really just gone sideways for a long time and unable to get above 67 Got there, got to 70 last week. So pulled back a little, close at 69.25. Um, but just an incredible move by Oxy. I, I bet you it fades a little from here, but big move. I think that's true with all the energy stocks right now. Yeah, they've been making a move. I think we have more upside, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback first. All right, what else do we got? What, what should I go to next? Tilray? Yeah, why not? They've got earnings on Tuesday, haven't they? Yeah. So TLRY. I've got a tickle, so yeah, I, I didn't do my normal rule of letting my winner run because it was going into the weekend. I don't like to hold stuff over the weekend. Um so seeing it at 260 is marginally depressing. Um but you can see a nice little move recently. I think the whole sector is kind of running, I think, isn't it? But MSOS, I think, is the, the ETF I brought up a couple of weeks ago as well. It is. Yeah, um, MSOS is really made. Here's Tilray real quick. But, yeah, let's look at that too. Um, huge move. Big pullback, though, Thursday, Friday. Kind of yeah. interesting. But well above the recent peak. So you like that. Maybe it's going to retest and get a bounce. So, I mean, it's tough when these these shares are trading around 250. You can get some pretty you know big moves in either direction. But it that's, does look like a decent support support level. That's why one of my rules is to not hold penny stocks over the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can never be, know what's going to happen with them. <laughs> yeah, and you can see it's been a, a tough go. So even though we had that big spike, still still got to get above three fifty, I would call it, to really feel like this is rounding and starting to move higher. Otherwise, yeah. we're still trending lower. Um, but yeah, let's look at MSOS. How has that been doing since we looked at it? I have some opinions. Maybe we get a little something like this. But this looks like that cup and handle as well, kind of, right? Well, got a little bit of a pullback. What are your yeah. thoughts on this, Sean? I think um, to get about that 1050-ish level, I think would be the key. Uh, coming back down, retesting and moving high. You've kind of got the arrows going that direction. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's it really. I've not much to really say apart from just kind of getting above that 10 and 50 level. That's generally just generally how I look at charts. I try and look for breakouts as as you guys know. Um 
Would you trade the range on this K? Probably not, I guess. No, I, t- I tend to stay away from the these kind of stocks. Yeah, it's not Kay's favorite. I remember you saying that. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to one that I know Kay will like. How about ServiceNow? Ticker and and that's massive, over. right? Yeah. I was actually looking at the chart right now for ServiceNow. Yeah, look at this consolidation. And a bit of a, I mean, it immediately looks like we got a little bit of a wedge going. All right, something like this. Kind of a quick and nasty. Quick and dirty. Well, let's see. I guess I can go here. Something like this. Yeah, exactly. Do you have thoughts on service now? Well, the earnings is coming up on 424, so about three weeks from now. And yeah. uh, they have 25 up revision, so they are expecting service now to beat the earnings. Um, I think right now, mo- I think in general in the SaaS space, Everybody's talking about AI, right? So what basically they are doing is um, how is AI, whether it's uh, powered by ChatGPT or any other model, is how they are using the the ChatGPT or whatever the is within their software to automate a lot of function. So the more the wo- AI word is thrown around by the software companies, I think the more momentum it will build, and we could see you know further high. So but this is a good sign that we are seeing for ServiceNow. It's it's barcoding. And preparing for the earnings, and just like every other earning, you will see a massive volume. If as long as they, you know, beat the earnings and EPS, most likely you will see a pop on that day, and then probably pull back and barcode again, unless there's a massive gap up because of some reason. It's been moving kind of nicely. Do you like this chart here, Sean? I do, yeah. Especially like the kind of peak and volume as well on on Friday. Um, especially with the Friday, don't really get many peaks and volume there. Yeah, uh, but also the RSI is curling as well. So it makes me think that maybe buyers are kind of looking at this one for potential breakout of that kind of wedge that we've got. Um, I'd probably stay away from it personally. I've got enough on my watch list this week, but um, I'd be... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get overwhelmed with the watch list. You know, another way I could draw this, by the way, I think, would be something like this. And, uh, you know, not perfect, but I like this kind of a setup where we have a flat upper... Uh, level for the for the triangle. I mean, it, it did have this big spike, so technically, it, it probably more is a, a wedge. But what my point is, is, when you get this tightening up, usually that's waiting to break out to the upside. Um, when you have the the upper level holding, but that continuing to get higher on those lows. So I do like this setup for service now, especially coming from all of these lower levels, and then finally barcoding, like you said. Okay, not bad at all. Yep. I think that will happen until the earning and that that would be the catalyst for your, you know. You need to go higher. Yeah. Yes. I kind of like uh, accumulating below 793, call it, um, in anticipation of that. Um, all right. So, SoFi popped oh. up here. What do you think, Kay? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I pretty much have a pretty standard uh, line on this one. Any Anytime it dips below $7, I add open options and then basically trade above, you know, it dips below because 7 is a very major level. A lot of volume shelf happens and it has a lot of support. Dips below, I buy it. And then if it's a trade, I'd let it run, sell it for profit. Gotcha. So $7 is key for you. Much like 17 for coupon is, is key for uh, Sean and I. Seven, 17 there, 7 here for SoFi. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can see kind of a, I don't know if I want to call this a reverse head and shoulders, but kind of, right? Mm, yeah, it looks like it, yeah. So maybe if we break above 764, we can get another meaningful push higher. Um, but that looks like about the neckline. But, but 784 is your 50-day, uh, which will act as a resistance for the stock. Yeah, absolutely. So really, eight, if it's not able to get above that 50-day, probably see additional rejection here. Sean, anything you would add? Uh, not really. We covered it quite nicely. Um, I think what I would add is when this stock starts to move, you probably get a little bit, a bit of a kind of FOMO attachment to it. So watch yeah. out for that. Yeah. I, I yeah. think I'll add one more thing. I think for stocks like Palantir, SoFi, the retail favorites, I think when you're trading the stock, have the trading mentality. Don't bring your investing mentality when you're trading, right? So you decide on your exit criteria and stick with it, upside or downside. I think what ends up happening is you are looking, you're, you're thinking of investing, but your mindset is trading or vice versa, and that gets into hot waters. Nice. Good stuff. Hey, real quick, I'm going to interject. Shout out. We got some uh, some friends in the, out in the crowd. Shout out to Paper Gains and Maple Stacks. See you guys out, 
out there. Appreciate the support. Tuning in. And uh, we do this every Sunday, in case you guys didn't know. Every Sunday, about this time, we're going to up it to an hour earlier next week. So everybody that didn't catch us at the top of, of this, uh, we're going to be tuning in at 1 p.m. Eastern starting next week. And uh, we'll have a special guest as well that we'll talk about here in a bit. But yeah, let's keep rolling through these uh, tickers. Let's see. So we've got a couple that we haven't really touched on in the past. We got Dollar General, DG. Um, either of you trade Dollar General? No. I, no. Have, nope. I have not either. Dollar Tree before. Say, say it again, Sean? I've done Dollar Tree before. I think it's Dollar Tree. Is it Dollar, Dollar Tree? Tree? Yeah, yeah. Tree. yeah. I've traded them before, but not, um, not Dollar General. So this looks a little bit tough. Here's how I would I would look at it, right? You've got all of this overhead supply. So as we reach these big levels, you're going to get a, a tendency for selling. And, and those who are unhappy with their losses, as soon as they can get back to break even, you're going to get a lot of selling pressure. So one getting back above 170, once getting towards 175 is going to be key for Dollar General. Otherwise, I could see this continue to reject and, and continue to move lower. Um, this, this is making another attempt here. I mean, no, no doubt about it, right? Um, trying to get back above, filled this gap down. So now just kind of barcoding. So maybe it's going to give that shot, but I'm not looking at it till it really moves above 170 and maybe retest that level. All right, that's quick on Dollar General. <laughs> Boeing. Boeing came up. Boeing. I'm like, a, I'm afraid to touch this one. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, um, yeah, what are your thoughts here, Kay? Anything, any strong uh, thoughts about uh, Boeing? Uh, man, it's like, uh, what is it? It's a downward trend. I mean, it's I, not I looking at Neo chart. Yeah. I mean, this this looks like a 179 seems like a decent support level. I guess it did get bounced from that level. So 179.66, like a couple of times. But um, seems like the 20 day is continues to be a resistance level. It got rejected, what, one, two, three times on my chart. Yeah, I think that the, I mean, this is messy. I've been note annotating all over the place, but you know, notice here, right here between 197 and 199, this has been support, pretty strong support, then a little bit of resistance. And um, after trying to be, you know, come up as support again, all this bad news, it's now, I think, going to be big resistance for Boeing. So even if we come back and test this 197, you're basically just shy of 200. I think it's going to be tough to get over it, but that's just me looking at the chart. And, um, you know, there's just been a lot of, I think there's even more new headlines coming out this weekend about Boeing. So um, it's a tough one. I would say if you want to trade the short side, I'd be uh, short in the pops. But otherwise, um, from a long-term perspective as well, if you if you like Boeing, it's a duopoly. Yeah. Um, and these might be good levels to start adding at around 180. Um, it's It's... Yeah, again, one I'm probably staying away from for myself personally. I mean, unless you actually have a long-term position right? where you are adding to it. I mean, I think from a trading standpoint, I would stay away from the trading standpoint. If you've got a long position, you, you want 178 to hold, definitely, because that doesn't look very nice if you go below that, does it? Um, and if you're in a short position at the moment, then you're probably licking your lips and hoping it goes below 178. Because uh, it looks like kind of heavy support. Well, 177, whatever you're yeah. doing there. 177, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. And then, then it will, 172, 173 is the next uh, support level. So, mm. and then, you know, wow, well, let's not go there. <laughs> let's hold the set 170s for Boeing. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Hey, you know, <laughs> this just makes me laugh because Nicola popped up. I just pulled it up because it's funny. So that company is still there? <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly why i was kind of laughing um i'm surprised it's still around too but uh because after homeboy went to jail and all of that but look we got a little bit of a pop recently so someone's putting money into this penny stock personally i wouldn't touch it i just uh i was surprised it's still on people's radars um all right i'm just gonna keep it rolling unless you guys really have any strong sentiment on and no. all right good stuff <laughs> um almost irresponsibly pulling that up small caps iwm um, here's the daily. I have some opinions on IWM. Are you guys tracking this at all? Uh, definitely. Uh, because I believe like for the next pullback, I definitely see like adding to the IWM position. You're adding on the pullbacks? Yeah. How about you, Sean? You trade IW IWM or a small cap index? Uh, I do actually sometimes. Yeah. I think we've got a nice little bit of a channel kind of going upwards now. You can see that 
fairly clearly just looking at the screen, um, you know, looking for a break either way, you know, upwards or downwards. At the moment, downwards looks, looks a bit more likely, especially with the kind of CPIs recently coming in a little bit hotter. But again, if we get a good one on Wednesday, then of course that's going straight back to the top of that channel, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think it was on, it was obviously above one ninety nine. I think it was we had in our radars uh, before. That's a, a good level. I know that's below the trend line, so that's an interesting kind of uh, what's the word? Not really sure what the word is, but yeah. So yeah, uh, <laughs> so, I, so I know far, you. Um, so I think you're kind of nailing it because it's been frustrating uh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like it gets above 200 and it pushes above 205 where I'm thinking, okay, great. We're going to hold 205, really 204.26 is the FIB level. And then it, it kind of fails back below. But ah, it doesn't quite get below 200, holds a 50-day. And now we're making higher highs and higher lows. So I want to be bullish, but for some reason, it's just not making me feel great. So, um, But we are in this upward trend. And if we're going to get a bounce here off of 204, I mean, this is a spot to go long in my opinion. So I'll be looking for this 204 to hold, continue higher, and try to get to 214. I have 214.61 next. Are you trading it? I'm not trading this one. I I probably should. Maybe I'll look at this to start of next week because I do kind of like the setup here. I feel like IWM just tortures me, though, if I'm <laughs> on here. <laughs> um, John Deere came up. I do like DE and Caterpillar has been crushing it. So let's was look it, at Caterpillar. Was it, was it John Deere or Donut? Krispy Kreme. Oh, I did see Donut. Let's look at that first. You're right. I missed that. You would love Kreme. that chart. Whew. <laughs> What's going on with Krispy Kreme? Did I miss some news? Uh, the last I heard was that, what, McDonald's was selling Krispy Kremes? But that was a long time back, right? <laughs> I missed the news. We'll have to see if there's news this week, but that's a that's a huge gap up, massive candle for Krispy Kreme. I feel like I'm missing the news. Drop it in the chat if you guys know what's going on here. But that is quite the breakout, and it looks like it held the gap, you know, held above the gap up. Um, so you're getting a lot of volume coming in here between $14 and $15. Call it $15.30. Um, and yeah, I would be looking to try to get back above $18 next, I guess, $17.85 was the high of that recent spike. Really curious of what that is. It, it's McDonald's news. That's what it, it is. It was the McDonald's news? Is that yeah. recent? Krispy Kreme partnerships with McDonald's, game changer for business analyst reports. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds interesting. Um, I, I actually think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the uh, fast food space. I'm not sure which direction it's going to go, but there you go. Get some partnerships going on. Looks like we had the profit taking, you know, um, I guess... Let's, let's do this. Let's zoom out really quick because this is interesting. So this is the weekly, and look at this, right? Like just unable to get above this level here. What are we going to call this? Um, let's go here. Yeah, roughly 1560. Um, you know, I mean, we could really call it 16, it looks like. Yeah, 1598, 16 is really the, the tough level to get above. It tried and it's failed. So I'll be looking for a move above 16. I mean, that's that seems like to be the key resistance. And then uh, if we can get there and get a bounce, maybe a continuation higher. Definitely add this to your guys' uh, radars now, your watch list. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. That volume. What was volume's that, Sean? The volume's increasing, isn't it? So Yeah, massive. Always, uh, but massive. it could be a kind of um, people trying to make a quick buck, perhaps. Uh, so it could dissipate. So the volume is to kind of stay up, I think. Yeah, this amount of volume is more. I mean, I don't have the number here, but the, I'm t thinking uh, institutional buying, right? So if you get, just from a general uh, standpoint, you get a big institutional buy come in, they're going to round out that position and continue to add. So I don't know if that's what's going on here, but you can look for continued spikes in volume here just to hold the uh, share price up that might be what you're seeing what we would be seeing there that'll be interesting um all right so thanks for circling me back to that you guys um john deere i want to get to that one because this chart has been powering higher and it did get above you know it's it kind of had a bit of resistance here um back in the end of 23 right at 400 and now we're above and kind of retest and continuing power higher, holding above the five-day moving average like a beast. Um, do you guys trade John Deere? Any thoughts here? Uh, no, it's uh, it's part of my long-term position, but not trading. Sean, are you familiar with this one? Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with it, but I never traded it before. Um, I think coming out of that volume profile will be the most important thing for me. 
So here's what I would tell you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, by the way, just quickly on the chart, I think I'm looking for a break above, and honestly, 417 would be more comfortable. But yeah, this volume profile up above 414, 415 would be ideal. Um, what I would say, though, is with John Deere, if you're trading options, um, there tends to be pretty widespread on those options. Okay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's yep. not the easiest, uh, the most simple options trade. So if you're diving in for you know for the first time trading options and John Deere is what you're looking at, just take, take a note of those spreads. It makes it a little bit more difficult to trade. Yeah, so the spreads are bad and the open interest is very low. I this, you wouldn't, We don't want to trade options on this one. Like now, the open interest, like 65, 25, 13, like that. Now, conversely, if you look at Caterpillar, right, look how much nicer of a chart this is. And I believe the options are far more liquid um, and, and very similar, you know, uh, kind of company to trade. So I actually like actually trading Caterpillar more. But for a long term positioning, I understand why you would be. Yeah. Into it as well. I, I think 100 percent. Yeah, they have much more volume in the open interest. Yeah, so just from a pure trading standpoint. Um, so if Deer can get back above, though, like I mentioned, 415, um, maybe retest this volume shelf and then push higher, targeting 437 next, um, that would not be a bad move to see play out. But the chart's not great, so I'm not overly excited. But. I think uh, we had AMD. Well, we got AMD. Yeah, I think someone asked for AMD recently. Yeah, would have liked to see it get above and hold above 180 after that sell-off, but we got a nice rejection, unfortunately. you have any immediate thoughts, Sean? It just doesn't look very good, does it? I mean, I was in a position around about 180, um, and obviously with all the volatility that week, I did cut it before the weekend. I think it was not this week, but the week before. Um, so I just kind of cut it and moved on. And I'm glad I did because it's obviously kind of moved lower. We did speak about, I think Kay mentioned it at 162, 163 yep. level. Yep, so 162, 90. That was the 50% retracement on the FIB. So we basically kind of got to wait for that to kind of hold. I um, mean, if that breaks, you know, semis take a bit of a, a downturn, then, yeah, I don't think it's looking very good. 150 maybe. -ish. You know, AMD used to be my regular trading. After it ran yeah. up, I would stop trading AMD altogether. Yeah, there, there are a lot of great opportunities in the semiconductor space. So I would say don't force it. Don't like don't fall in love with AMD. If that's just like the name you pick to trade in semiconductors. So you want to get on the action. This is not a great looking chart currently. I like AMD for the long term. But yeah, we got earnings coming up in a few weeks, you know, end of the month. And uh, yeah, just not a great looking chart. Maybe it'll make me eat my words. But um, from a trading perspective, I would just look at other opportunities myself. I think we next one was first solar FSLR. I do like FSLR. You guys remember it was trading so nicely. Remember this this time frame? This is so great. Um, from all of 22, it just kept laddering higher and higher. And then it finally decided to roll over. Um, yeah, which is a bummer to see. And you can see this 160, 164 level uh, that I drew was resistance. It looks like we broke above and retested. So maybe we start to see continuation higher here. I would be looking to get above this resistance here from prior attempts. So call it right around 177.50. And if we can move above that, yeah, I'd be targeting get to 194 next. Absolutely. Was it solar your uh, pick of the year? Uh, it's part of it, yeah. So it's in okay. the ECF that I picked, yeah. Yeah, so it's nice to see it kind of moving nicely. Having a line that you've uh, drawn in the past and then look back at the stock and having it bounce perfectly, isn't that a nice feeling, Nate? It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I like that too. But it's yeah. also quite frustrating if you haven't played it as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad that we're getting this brought to our attention now because this is just now getting above and retesting that that long, you know, like you said, that, that trend line that goes back or that uh, support resistance line that goes back. So... Yeah, we're yeah. Seeing, seeing some tightening up here too, right? Absolutely, yeah. If you bring up end phase, it's doing the kind of opposite, which is interesting. Actually, somebody just asked for end phase. If you want to pull well, that let's up. take a look. They had, uh, I think it was 7% down, I think, on, on uh, Friday. Not a good day. Ooh, yeah, after yeah. a it's big week. It's not that bad. I mean, it's still above that kind of trend line. It's kind of coming upwards. I've drawn a wedge on my chart. Um, so we're still well within that kind of range, but it just... It's not doing as well as first solar, of course, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So, uh, Iris Capital, that he said, uh, Jim Kramer said, buy this stock. Is it? Which one? Which one? Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Solar said Jim Cramer says buy for this stock. IEP. All right, I'll jump back to that one. IEP, you said? Yeah. All right, sell, hold sell, on. Sell. Um, oh, should, should we sell that stock now? <laughs> well, real quick on M phase because this has got my attention. I did draw this anchor view up from the October 27th earnings, and it's respected it pretty well here thus far. Um, so maybe we're going to get a retest here of about 109.50, 110, um, and get a bounce. That would be ideal to continue higher, but you are going to have to contend um, with getting above this resistance level at 136. I think so, the 200 moving average is just above it as well. So that's another kind of point of resistance. Gotcha. To be aware of that. Um, real quick, back to First Solar, and then we'll jump to IEP. Um, I just wanted to comment because I kind of blew past it. I do like the, the, this setup. Uh, it's, you're getting higher lows tightening up here. We got above this 160, 164, and now we can see it break above 177. If it breaks above, I would look at entering on a retest potentially at 177. That'd be a nice spot if you haven't gotten in already. Um, all right, let's look at this one real quick. K I E P. Whew. Icon. Why is this familiar? Why is this familiar? <laughs> I don't know why this is familiar. Uh, yeah, 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 you're right. This sounds familiar. But this is one that uh, is yeah. a buy? Yeah, that's from Jim Cramer, yeah. Oh, man, what is he seeing in this? Because that's an ugly chart. <laughs> what, what do they do? Good question. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I, I will say the, uh, the anti-Jim Cramer trade, I don't know that it's been working as well lately. I think that it's kind of faded and that. He's figured it out, and he's been saying the opposite of what he thinks, just to kind of mess with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Icon Enterprises is uh, in, in, engages in investment, energy, automotive, food packaging, real estate, home, fashion, and pharma businesses. It sounds like a conglomerate. <laughs> yeah. um, but it looks like the energy segment refines um, and markets transport for fuels. So, um, yeah, it's definitely tied into the energy sector and – that one might be worth just looking into if it's getting some attention, but I don't know. The chart looks terrible, so I would stay away from that one. All right. Anything else we want to touch on this week? I see CRM. Let's get them. Let's get them. Should we bring up Tesla as well, just for old time's sake? I think yeah. I got a Neo somewhere. We'll look at Tesla and Neo. Let's, let's take a look at CRM first, and then we'll go do exactly that. Um, and then we'll wrap this thing up. I like it. Appreciate everybody tuning in. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Trading Triangle over on YouTube. We appreciate the support there. And uh, you guys seeing anything here on CRM that I'm not? Yeah, I think I mean, we got a bit of a wedge. I mean, similar to, similar to Cloudflare, isn't it? <clears throat> kind of yeah. looking to break up to the upside. Let's see when the earning is. I think earning is coming up soon. Yeah, 529. Oh, two months from now. So, yeah, looking to hold, I would say, this level here, which is right about 293. I'll actually get that penciled in. And, uh, yeah, if we can hold 293 and continue to bounce off of that, looking for a wedge break. Um, but, yeah, a little bit of consolidation after a nice move higher. Not a big move post uh, those recent earnings for CRM. And then, of course, they had big news um, earlier in the year, right? I think with – was it their CEO? So well, many, no, so that, many. Was, that was Snow. The that scene. was snow too, but I think CRM, it was last year actually. I'll have to go back and look, but I think that's what I was getting at though. The whole point of me bringing it up is we're past that. Look, can, stock is moving higher. We got a bit of consolidation here. And uh, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not loving these lower highs, but if we get a break above this wedge and it can push back up towards 318, uh, you might see a continuation there. So that's what I'd be looking for, but mostly holding that 293 level. want to hold, hold that level. Yeah. All right. So we said Tesla and Neo. Let's do Tesla first. So um, this downtrend is not breaking. That is what I was looking for. You can see my annotations here, and we did not get it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this bad boy. But I was looking for a break, and that trend line is holding rather nicely. Um, if you're looking to sell and if you're actually looking to accumulate, um, we might see some more downside. I would not be surprised to see this 144 level come into play. Um, if, you know, again, we can't break this trend, which we have just not been able to. 
I say we like I'm a part of Tesla. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Sean? Um, are you are you looking to accumulate or uh, any immediate thoughts on Tesla? Well, I'm always looking to accumulate, that's for sure. Um, but I think with the news obviously happening on Friday, a little bit of a push on the after hours, it'd be interesting to see if that can hold up. Um, like you say, you've got a lot of resistance in the way, uh, especially around that kind of 180 level. Uh, 184, I think I have on my chart, so I've got that one you know, ready to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's in a downtrend, isn't it? So I've been basically looking to break out of that. Uh, but yeah, interesting to see. I, th I think it can, because Tesla can do that, can't it? Yeah, and, and honestly, I feel like Tesla will move when, when the time will come. I think for now, taking advantage of the downward pressure to accumulate for long term. That's yeah. my strategy, personally. Nice. I did post the downside trade. I think it's, you know, you could still trade it to the downside, but it's made such a move. I'd be looking for support to break this trend to, to get a nice big push for some upside. That's, that's what I'm hoping and waiting for. We'll see what we get. Sean. Neil, what's the latest? You are our resident expert. <laughs> I like the uh, I like your sell off arrow. That's good. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I, I got to remember what I, what these notes here. So we had this, uh, yeah, this break of support here, and then the sell off. I can't remember. I must have posted this for my newsletter at some point. But we continued to sell, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's not great to be a, a neo investor at the moment. I mean, it is in terms of what they're doing with the company, but. It's not in terms of stock price, but that, you know, you kind of hinted towards it there, Kay, with um, Tesla in bad times. And if you like the company, you're just going to keep adding. Um, so I'm just I'm kind of dripping in here and there. Uh, red days, obviously, I tend to buy. I never really buy on green days because you never know with how it can go on a green day. But, yeah, I mean, there's nothing in terms of way of support. I think I've got 430 on my on my chart, um, which is where we kind of are now, there or thereabouts. And that goes way back to obviously kind of 2020-ish. So, um, we're looking for just basically a little bit of strength, to be honest with you. Uh, but there's, there's plenty in the works for, for Neos. So it's just a case of kind of turning that corner and getting people excited, getting people looking at it again. And that's when the kind of price action kind of moves, I guess. But yeah, I'm still bullish on Neo, that's for sure. Nice. Kay, you have any thoughts on Neo? No, I mean, I mean, if it keeps falling four, three dollars, then it starts to become, you know, uh, an exciting proposition here because you could trade for the upside on some catalyst news, like say, for example, you get it at three fifty, three eighty, four dollars, right? You know, get it to six or something. That's a good trade, just like SoFi, right? Seven, you get in, you take few cents for profit. I, mean, I posted that the other day on, on a video, even a retracement back to seven, which is obviously a key level, that's, that's 50% from here, yeah, which is insane. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would I buy Neo at $12, $10? Probably not. But at $3, $4, it starts to, you know, you're like, hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you're looking at these levels for a long term accumulation. I'll say in a short term trading kind of scenario, this is going to be tough to get above this 550 yeah. to six level, right? Because you've got some. Some uh, buyers and sellers in here, they're going to have to battle it out. But, uh, yeah, if we get above 615 in the near term, I think you might see an attempt back at 7 uh, pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, the, the, the trend is, is still lower, so we'll have to see what happens for NEO. Um, it's been a rough go. So, Nate, just on the option side, right, 33 days out option, so expiring on 10th May, for a $4, you're getting $0.21. Cents. That's pretty good there you go so you take advantage of these options thinking about it k sounds like you're thinking about it um, um i don't know maybe <laughs> <laughs> guys i think that's uh, all the tickers we can take but um i see some some requests about leverage tickers and and that's a nice segue so let me go ahead and wrap up the charts for right now and again another great week glad to get back at it you guys I appreciate everybody tuning in well over 2,000 of you uh, tune in yet again for another great live stream. So, you know, we'll be back next week at 1 p.m. And when I mentioned the leverage stickers, um, we've got Granite Shares joining us after our regular show. So we'll get into a bunch of different tickers they've got. Go check out what Granite Shares offers in the meanwhile, and we'll dive into it with Will, get some detail after our stream, which, again, will start at 1 p.m. Eastern next week. Um, and then Sean, K. Great to be back on with you guys. Uh, missed it. it getting away um, for the coming week. I'm, I'm going to be waiting CPI, PPI. I know that's a little bit uh, bland to start the week, but I think it makes most sense to wait for those numbers to come out and you know trade accordingly. 
and uh, we'll get after it. I'm sure I'll be posting lots of ideas on the timeline. Sean, are you going to be uh, – I, I know you said you're going to be waiting. Do you have any names in particular you're focused on, or is it kind of a wait and see for Wednesday? Uh, it's definitely a wait and see, yeah. What I would say, if you are trading um, until then, I would probably just you know, concentrate on smaller positions. Um, obviously, it's going to be quite volatile going into it, choppy perhaps. Um, so if you are going to you know, trade, take the small wins, get ready for Wednesday and, uh, you know, just be careful. Sit in your hands, be patient, and, uh, yeah, trade safe. That's all yeah, I get those say. small wins. They compound, right? That's they do. exactly what they, they really do. do. Yeah. Exactly. Same here. Well, nothing, nothing different, you know, uh, just playing it based on how the CPI, PPI happens and basically managing my older trades that were still open, like Snow and Data Dogs, uh, for the coming weeks. Nice. Good stuff. Well, I'm looking at DraftKings. We didn't mention it, but DraftKings could continue higher. I thought it was going to fade. It's setting up interesting, so that's another one I'll post about a bit. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Appreciate it. Again, everybody tuning in. Kevin, I see you out there. Appreciate your appreciation. And uh, we'll be back next week. And uh, again, stay tuned throughout for all of our trade ideas as we post them on X and on YouTube. Until next week, the Trading Triangle says thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.